How many of you agree with the fact that life has multiple roads as it leads to different destination? Yes, it's true, but not every road will get you into the right one. However, remember, every wrong road that you walked on is a learning curve. And this learning will give you experience that will guide you to become who you are. So today I am to talk about the list of exams that you can attempt while you are preparing for CSIR net. So for your information, I have come up with the details of the exams and also the similarity of CSIR net syllabus with other competitive exams like ICMR, GATE, DPT and others. So with no more delay, let's dive in into the session. Hit two targets with one stone. With your single preparation, you can qualify multiple exams. While you are preparing for CSI or NET, you are automatically preparing yourself to hit more than one target at once. So here in a single year, you are getting multiple chances. Where all the competitive exams are in line, that provides you an opportunity to achieve your goal. And this is what called as strategic planning towards success. Now let's get more into the insights of the competitive exams that you can write and attempt along with CSIR net. So the first examination over here is GATE. It stands for Graduate Aptitude Test in Engineering. It is one of the most reputed examination that is conducted across India, which provides opportunity for the candidates to achieve their goal. So what are the advantages of qualifying this GATE exams? So once you qualify this GATE exam, you are eligible for a PhD program in any of the foreign universities as well in, in India like you can apply for IITs, CFTIs for your research. Also, this valid GATE score is accepted by public sector undertakings for a job profiling at Indian Oil, Hindustan Petroleum as well as Gale etc. So now coming to the exam details, that is subject selection. So this GATE exam is going to be happen for a total of 29 subjects. So here candidate can choose two subjects of their choice. Yes, you heard me right. So while you are applying for this GATE exam, you can choose two subjects of your interest. So this exam is going to be conducted in the month of February. So the GATE dates are already announced. So it is going to be in the month of Feb. So this exam is a CBT mode where you can expect the multiple choice question, MSQs as well as NAT for this exam. So this year for 2023, the organizing center is going to be IIT Kanpur and here you can find the link from where you can apply for this exam. So the op online application portal is going to be start from August 30. So you can find the link here. Now coming to syllabus. So if you are a CSI net aspirant, you may be targeting general aptitude, unit 1 that is biochemistry, unit 2, unit 3, unit 13, immunology that is a part of unit 4, unit 6, unit 8, unit 7 as well as unit 10 for your preparation. But all, all topics you need to cover specifically for gate is chemistry, plant anatomy, concept of genomics, economic botany. This is a very important section from where you will get a lot of questions from this section. Plant pathology where you have to focus on the concept of all the pathogens that is related to plant species. Detailed microbiology where you have to focus on the history, numericals, microbial diversity under this section as well as food technology. Now if I consider this whole gate syllabus as 100%, I can clearly see that CSIR comprises 50 to 60 percent of the GATE syllabus. That means apart from this, you only have to prepare 40 to 50 percent of the syllabus in order to qualify your GATE examination. So this is all about GATE. So now coming to the next series of examination that is ICMR JRF. So this ICMR stands for Indian Council of Medical Research. So this test again, it's going to be in a year that is in the month of July. The validity period for this fellowship is similar to CSIR that is it is for two years. The, the fellowship amount is going to be 31,000 per month with an contingency grant of 20,000. 
This exam is going to be a CBT mode that is online and make sure the number of seats are only 120. So the number of seats are limited for this ICMR JRF exam where you can expect the MCQ type question. Now who can apply for this exam? So candidates, those who have a MSc or equivalent degree in life sciences are eligible to apply for this ICMR JRF examination. So what are the advantages of writing this ICMR JRF? So if you're writing this exam, this exam is very easier than other competitive exams. So if you are having the basic clarity of the concept, it will easily help you to qualify this exam. So again, the topics that are similar to say CSI syllabus in ICMR syllabus is unit 1 that is biochemistry, unit 2, unit 3, unit 4, unit 7, unit 8, unit 6 as well as unit 30. But here you need to cover other topics as well which includes bioinformatics. Under bioinformatics, you should have a basic concepts of BLAST, FATSA, what is alignment, what is global and local alignment, what is alignment score, score, what is protein and nucleotide databases. Also, you should know the concepts related to pharmacology and nursing. Basic terminologies and principles of botany, zoology and biotechnology should be known. That means you should be very clear with the definitions of botany, zoology as well as biotechnology. Also environmental sciences and veterinary sciences is must. Under general aptitude, what all topics you are preparing for CSINR is exactly the same as for ICMR. But here you have to focus on scientific phenomena which includes global warming, greenhouse effect, hurricane, earthquake, tornado, etc. Under general knowledge, you have to be clear about the synthetic materials, nuclear sciences as well as measurements pass. Under biostatistics, you should be knowing about hypothesis testing, what is confidence interval, difference between null and alternative hypothesis, data analysis, probability, sampling, what is data interpretation. So all these topics you have to cover under general aptitude of ICMR. Rest all the topics for this exam is common to CSIR syllabus. So now coming to the third category of exam that is DBD JRF. This DPT stands for Department of Biotechnology. So this exam is conducted once in a year and the validity period is only for two years which is same as CSIR. So the number of seats is roughly going to be 275. So if you are a master's degree in biology, agriculture, life sciences or biotechnology, so you can apply for this exam. So the link is given here, it's dbt.nta.nac.in. So at the time of result declaration, Two lists are declared for this exam. First is category 1 and the other is category 2. So candidates who are qualified under category 1 are eligible to avail the fellowship from DBT program and can register for the PhD program. But the candidates who are qualified under category 2 are not entitled to any kind of fellowship from the DBT program but they can appoint themselves in any of the DBT sponsored project and then enroll for their PhD. That means here DBT is not going to fund you for your PhD. If you are enrolled in any kind of lab for your research, so lab is going to provide you that fund or stipend. So what are the new topics that you need to cover to qualify this exams? Again, the core unit will remain the same as CSIR like unit 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 12, 13. But here you need to focus on some specific topics like genomics, proteomics, intellectual property rights which include patents, copyright, trade secrets, others. What are biosafety principles? What is bioethics? What are the concepts of biotechnology? What are the processes for molecular breeding research methodology? Biochemical engineering, industrial biotechnology, bioinformatics basics, environmental biotechnology, marine biotechnology, as well as medical biotechnology. So you can see here, you have to cover all the basics of biotechnology fields that are industrial, environmental, marine, medical, and others. So now the fourth examination is ICAR GRF. This ICAR stands for Indian Council of Agriculture Research. So this exam is for those candidates who are fascinated with research in agriculture. So if you are qualifying this ICR, JRF or SIF, SRF, you are entitled for PhD program at any of the reputed institutes across India.
but here the syllabus is different under general knowledge you have to focus on the concepts and basics that is related to plant physiology so general knowledge is also related to plant physiology then what are the core subjects you need to prepare for this exam it's going to be genetics and plant breeding seed sciences and technology economic botany plant genetic resources plant pathology agriculture entomology sericulture plant physiology as well as agricultural biotechnology so here if you see the syllabus you can clearly see part c part that is economic botany so this economic botany is related to gate life sciences syllabus and again this plant physiology is a csir unit 6 so you can see if you are done with these two parts you only have to prepare seven parts apart from it so in this exam that is icr jrf you should be very clear about the basics as well as the advanced concepts of plant physiology as well as agricultural biotechnology coming to the last category of examination that is tifer it is stands for tata institute of fundamental research which is also called as gbils joint graduate entrance examination in biology and interdisciplinary sciences so if you are going for this exam this test is going to be extremely basics but what you need to cover you should have the basic knowledge of mathematics physics prince biology as well as chemistry so what are the participating institute that conduct this exam so it is actrec ccmb cdfd icers which includes barhampur kolkata pune trivandrum as well as tirupati imsc instem MSLS, NBRC, NCCS Pune, NIBMG, NIA New Delhi, NIZER, TISTI, as well as TIFER. So all these institute coordinate and they conduct this exam. So now once you qualify this exam, make sure you have to apply separately for your PhD program, and you have to choose the research uh, institute of your interest. So what is the advantage of giving this TIFER exam? Firstly, the fellowship will be same as CSIR. Secondly if you are writing this exam and qualifying it it is opening your way for 14 different institute so you can apply in any of the institute of your research after you qualify this exams so this is all about the exams that you can write and attempt while you are preparing for CSIR net so thank you everyone for watching this session if you like the session do not forget to like share and subscribe to the channel that is biotechnica mute you in the next video till then take care bye bye keep learning